Hello, everybody. My name is Prashant Kador. I'm a um, lead engineering lead at uh, Enterprise Mobility Computers at Zebra. Today, I'll be talking about Enterprise Browser and Enterprise Keyboard. Those are the two subjects that are kind of uh, go hand in hand, and that's what we'll be talking about. The agenda for today is I'll quickly introduce what is Enterprise Browser as well as Enterprise Keyboard. And then we talk about what's new in an enterprise uh, uh, browser licensing. Uh, and uh, so some of the new features that we have been adding, added recently, I'll introduce them to you and some deprecation message. And then we will talk about enterprise SAP bundle, DOM injection, enterprise app configurator, and multi-session. And once again, on the enterprise keyboard, I'll give a quick introduction and how to use it with Java Intent. Uh, JavaScript and Intent APIs, as well as using a tool called Enterprise Keyboard Designer. So what is Enterprise Browser? Enterprise Browser is a cross-development browser, industrial browser, enterprise browser, uh, which provides rich JavaScript interface to access Zebra value adds, such as barcode scanners, printers, RFID, key capture, custom keyboard, camera, Bluetooth scanners, uh, intents in Android and sensors, et cetera, et cetera. The, the list of APIs, I will show it to you in the next slide, but I have a, a, a link there. You can see all the APIs that are supported in Enterprise Browser. On the right-hand side, you will see where the Enterprise Browser sits in terms of features, uh, in terms of the different levels of solution support and all the way into the SAP. Um, and we also talk about how it's beneficial to different verticals such as warehouse, retail, healthcare, et cetera. So these are the APIs I was talking uh, about before. And these are just a few of the APIs that are a big number of APIs that are available. I'm not gonna go through each one of them, but uh, I'm pretty sure if you are interested in any of these uh, items, uh, the link that I just gave you in the last slide will help you with all kinds of documentation, samples, and code snippets. So now we introduce you to Enterprise Browser. I'm coming into the licensing part. Enterprise Browser is a licensed product. We used to make a perpetual license available all these years. Perpetual means once you buy them, it's good for life. And in, in addition to perpetual, you were supposed to buy a maintenance license separately so that you, you have the license to run the app and then you have maintenance contract also. So recently what we have done is we changed that and we created a term-based license or subscription license one year, three year, and five years. And these term-based licenses include maintenance as well. So we, we think this is very beneficial to our customers. Our customers were asking for this kind of a term-based license. So that's how we came out with this. In addition to perpetual term-based, and we also have 90-day trial license available for you. So the, the next uh, new a feature that we are introducing in the recent days is set keyboard on launch or foreground. What this means is when your app comes to the foreground or when your app is launched, I want to present an IME, any IME that I want uh, to my app uh, on the screen. And that is what this setting does. So. You can pick any IME that you want. You can use enterprise keyboard. You can use some other IME. You can create your own IME for that reason. And the next one is, okay, I launched my IME. I am using that IME in my app, but I'm exiting my app. I wanna switch it back to some other IME because I, I don't want others to use the, the IME that I was using in that app because that IME uh, was customized for that app. So this is where set keyboard on exit or background comes into place. The next one is not new. We always had it. Uh, it's just in context with those two I talked about, this goes hand in hand where you, where you get to say, 
I do not want any IME when the focus is on any, any uh, input field because I want to be able to scan, I want to be able to speak. So for that reason, I want to disable all IME when the focus is on this input field. So that's a feature very useful in many cases because you don't want the IME popping up and taking up your screen while the expectation is for end users to scan the barcodes. Um, so let's talk about a few deprecations here. Um, there are two scanning APIs that was uh, legacy inherited into uh, enterprise browser, pocket browser scanning API and row element scanner APIs. These are deprecated. By the end of this year, we will not support anymore. So if you are using them, please, you start using enterprise browser barcode APIs. I have a link there on how to do the migration. If you are using a particular set of APIs in Pocket Browser or row elements and what the equivalent uh, APIs in enterprise browser are, all the new features are added to enterprise browser. So there is really no reason for you to continue to use Pocket Browser or row element scanner APIs. We strongly recommend you start uh, transitioning to the enterprise browser barcode APIs as soon as possible. Uh, and migration guide gives you plenty of information on how to do it. You can always reach out to us if you have any questions on. The next peach, uh, feature we have added recently is pinch to zoom so that you can enable zooming by pinching in and out. So that feature is called uh, enable zoom, true or false. And uh, I do have a quick demo on this. I'll, I'll show you in a, in a minute. And this is something you configure in your config file. You can also use an API to do it as well. The next one is hide navigation bar, navigation bar or system bar. So many a times, many applications do not need access to navigation bar. They do not want the end users pulling the navigation bar or system bar and going somewhere else and doing something else, hitting home, back, recent buttons, all of them. So you can disable that in the config file or in your application, you can call this and then disable that as well. And a, and a quick uh, demo of both of these, pinch to zoom and hide navigation bar. Um, <clears throat> I'll speak to this, there is no audio. So this is basically for Android uh, devices. <clears throat> So this is a pinch to zoom. So you see that this is small, you can't see it. And then you're pinching it to zoom. And then you're moving the screen around. And then the navigation bar. So That's the navigation bar demo of how to enable, disable the navigation bar as well. And moving on to the next slide. Um, so now I'll talk about enterprise browser SAP bundle. What is SAP bundle? Uh, why do we need it, right? SAP, using SAP on mobile devices brings its own challenges. And I'll show some pictures as well as a quick demo uh, what the challenges are. One is UI does not scale well. The buttons in SAP do not scale well. SAP uses function key layouts and Android does not provide function keys. And many a times transparent keyboards are better than a keyboard taking up the screen and then not knowing what you're typing into. A keyboard that can be shown or hidden and map it to your hardware key. If you press a TTT button, show the keyboard or hide it. And how to use database scanning in the SAP bundle. So you don't have to write any code. SAP network errors handling. 
when SAP errors uh, occurs, what do you want to do automatically instead of expecting the end users to understand those errors and take some action? And then hardware keys map to quit, back, zoom in, zoom out. So instead of providing a, a software key, you can use hardware key to do certain things such as quitting, going back, zooming in and out. Orientation lock, portrait or landscape, system bar hiding, we talked about it. Web view configuration, cookies, cache, DB, and down storage. All of these things come with the SAP bundle uh, that are very, very useful when you're using uh, an app such as SAP. So here are the two bundles. One is the uh, SAP signed and another one is just regular APK. On the right-hand side, you see the differences. We are adding some components. These are very high level components. Underneath that, there are several smaller components, custom JS file, custom key layouts. I talked about the function keys. And enterprise browser supports SAP UI and uh, SAP Fiori. Uh, so including EWM, external warehouse management is supported in enterprise browser. So here is a quick demo. I'll skip the demo uh, to the right position so that uh, you, you kind of get the hang of it without spending too much time on it. So, and uh, so this is, this is the, if you run an SAP login screen in Chrome, this is the screen you might see. Very small, you can't see anything, never mind entering data there, right? So now I will speed up here and this is the one, and this is the screen that you will see when you are using SAP bundle in enterprise browser. It is zoomed and the keyboard pops up so that you don't have to do anything and you just enter it. And moving on to the next one. And this is the first screen that uh, usually this is the menu screen that you will see. This is where you go from in SAP to do certain actions. And this is what you will see if nothing is done about the screen, right? This is the default screen that you will see on Android devices. And depending on the resolution of the screen, this could get worse even. And when you're doing this same thing in the enterprise browser, so we're gonna start the enterprise browser on this one. And, and this is the, uh, the login screen I talked about. And once you log in, and there is the, the menu that, that is definitely much more user-friendly than what we saw before. And also we do have um, other things here, such as I'm gonna skip a few things here. Um, so this is the one thing I wanted to talk about is the uh, transparent key where you can see, especially in the, on the landscape screens, this is very useful because you are not taking up uh, half of the screen. You, even if you are taking up, which is much easier to enter the, 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 the data, uh, you can see what you're entering into in the background. You can control the transparency of these uh, keyboards yourselves. You can create your own keyboards, which we will talk about soon. That's the SAP bundle. And now I will talk about DOM injection. Uh, DOM documentation object model and injection is basically changing the behavior of your application during the runtime. So I'll give some use cases here. I have a legacy web application running on the desktop. I wanna run them on Android devices and access Android device capabilities such as NFC uh, and, um, uh, and Canva. The second one is I'm already running web application on the device. Now I wanna use enterprise browser capabilities or Zebra capabilities, such as scanning, such as RFID, NFC, I wanna be able to use it. And I'm running an application on legacy Windows Mobile CE devices. When I try to migrate to new Android devices, UI is not rendering well. 
And it's not just the problem with SAP screens. You can have the same kind of problems if you have written the applications for OHC Windows mobile devices. Next one is I have mixed deployment of old and new devices. Old devices, I understand, they can do certain things. New devices are capable of new taking uh, uh, support new uh, capabilities. I want to take advantage of these new capabilities on new devices. And how do I do that without have, uh, changing the code? I do not want to change the server side application logic, which is very expensive to implement, validate, support, and maintain. And I want to customize application behavior specific to a device or customer. So it could be a set of devices, TC7X or TC5, or a particular customer requires certain things, and I want to only push those changes to that customer. And I don't want to change multiple changes to my server-side applications because one, it's expensive, takes time, and then uh, very expensive to support and maintain. And that's where the DOM injection comes. Basically, you create a configuration file in an enterprise browser, and you push it to the devices that you need them on, and then during the runtime, enterprise browser looks at these DOM injection files and changes the behavior without you having to change the server code on the existing backend. So, so what are some of the things that you can do? DOM injection is very powerful. There are a lot of things you can do. You can pretty much change how it looks, how it behaves, what it does, what it sends, pretty much everything can be done. And one of that, you know, we talked about this, which is zooming, right? Very critical when you're uh, transitioning uh, applications from CE Windows Mobile or using uh, uh, some other applications that weren't written for uh, high resolution devices. And this is an example where you can go and, and zoom it in the config file. When in this case, what uh, another thing, important thing to notice here is you are saying when you see 400 session timed out, when it redirected to a startup application or page where you are supposed to do user ID password, this is where I have my problem and then zoom it. So you're setting some criteria for this to happen. And you're also saying what page to zoom it on. And some other things, <clears throat> you can redirect it. When some things happen, 400 session timeout, I want you to redirect. Or when a page appears, when something gets blocked, when an error occurs, you can go back to uh, uh, the previous page, go to the home page, or quit the enterprise browser itself. And here is the um, the um, using the DOM injection to change these, uh, make use of the screen size, whether it's portrait or landscape. Landscape, you can change it. So here. What we are doing is we are basically saying font size, increase the font size and height. And that way it's taken up the screen. And one is user friendly, also, that is, it's making complete use of real estate here. And we do have a, a tool for this. This tool does not do all the DOM injection capabilities that you can do. But what it does is if you have an application and you have you, it does, you haven't written to make use of scanning, RFID, printer, or uh, enterprise keyboard, or using your own custom key layout. This gives you a graphical PC tool where you can say when this page appears, when the focus is on this particular field, I want you to enable scanning. I want you to provide voice input. I want you to provide voice output, or I want you to print something, or I want you to pop up this custom keyboard. So that is what this, it's a PC tool. You do this on the PC and it creates a file and you push that file to devices. You can use EMMs to do mass deployment. Here's a quick uh, demo on this. <clears throat> so once again, I, I, I'm gonna, Pass through this real quick. 
Okay, this is the uh, front page where you get to say um, you, what purpose you're doing. And the first thing you're gonna do really is Just uh, give me a second here. It's showing you what its capabilities are. And I'll let you read them. Just going back to this um, page here. Okay, I'll stop here. So what we are seeing here is on the left-hand side, you have your application screen. This is live application screen. You connect your device to the PC and run your application, and you will see the app, app, uh, application window popping up here. And for example, in this case, you want to scan name, right? And then you want to enter the age and then provide the address. And then you can click on this, and then you can go into the scanner input, enable the scanner, and then you can configure the scanner as well, what image or scanner that you want and any decoder type that you wanna enable. In the same way, you can enable voice input also or keyboard input. You can enable enterprise keyboard, or you can say, when the name comes, I only want alpha. When the age comes, I only want numeric. When the address comes, I want to be able to scan it, only scanning. I don't want anyone putting in the data. All these kind of things, you can do this without having to rewrite your application. Like I said, it creates a config file and then you push the config file. Now, enterprise browser looks at this screen. When this pops up, it changes the behavior of your app. It's pretty powerful. Apart from scanner, I also said you can do voice, you can do keyboard, and then output configuration could be what you see here, it could be, I want to print it. So it gives you the printing capability without having to learn the printer uh, APIs. And then data formatting, you can massage the data. You can, you can add prefixes, postfixes. You can split data and throw away the data that you don't need. All this kind of data formatting is also available in the enterprise uh, app configurator. Like I said, it does a part of the DOM injection, and it helps you with it, especially enabling features uh, such as scanning. Uh, but DOM injection is a lot more powerful than just this uh, tool itself. Uh, next uh, topic I'm going to talk about is multi-session. Multi-session tab uh, approach is where you have multiple apps, and you will have different tabs for each apps available. For example, it's shown here in this picture, right? Uh, these are all different apps. So you will be able to create these apps. Uh, you will be able to create these tabs and assign them to your apps that you want them to run. Not only will you be able to create the tabs as shown here in this code here, you will also be able to maintain the session or state as you switch from tab to tab. So if you are entering the, uh, entering the user ID password on one screen and then switch to a printer app or SAP, and then you come back to the screen, then you will still have the state maintained and configured. So that's the tab approach. And there is a demo here. I'm not gonna uh, play that demo at this point. And <clears throat> moving on to, uh, this is the demo. I will uh, let you play with this and then also, you will see the uh, code associated with it. And the next one is the shortcut approach. Shortcut approach is instead of the tab, I want shortcuts for each of my applications. And this is the way to do it. And once again, the status or state of each shortcut will be maintained by enterprise browser. In addition to that, instead of you trying to figure this all out, right? How to use the config file, how to enable it, all of that. We have a small utility card, shortcut creator utility. You can download and then do it yourself. And it creates config file, which you can push it to all devices. 
for mass deployment. So you don't have to figure out how to do this. Uh, so, uh, this is a demo on how to do a shortcut approach. I'm going to skip this. And the enterprise keyboard, I'll, enterprise keyboard is a uh, is designed for enterprise use cases. Google keyboard is not very helpful in many enterprise uh, use cases. Here, it provides a lot of configuration that Google keyboard doesn't. Uh, such as using only alpha numeric or uh, special keys scanning. Uh, and then you can remap keys up to six keys. Tab-based navigation is available. You can create your own custom key layout. Option to customize Android pers personal directory, uh, sorry, dictionary, right? Select your languages, auto capitalization, auto correction, and, and the list goes and on and on and on. And that is the power of this because Google keyboard is not very helpful in many cases when it comes to enterprise use cases. And we have a, a very good documentation on this. The link is given there. And, and we have intent APIs for controlling the enterprise keyboard. You don't have to use enterprise keyboard all the time. You can decide when to use it and when to pop it up. So you can enable, disable, using uh, programmatically, you can do enable, disable, query what key, keyboard layout is available on the device, set your own keyboard layouts, or reset keyboard layout to the default keyboard. <clears throat> That's a quick um, uh, introduction to how to use Java Intent APIs. And um, uh, we will make this uh, slides available for you, including this demo. You will be able to see how this all works. And this app is available for you to download. And I'll move on to Enterprise Keyboard Designer now. Enterprise Keyboard Designer is a GUI tool. Enterprise Keyboard is great, but I want to create my own uh, custom layouts. I want my, and I want to control it programmatically. And that's why we create a PC tool where you can drag and drop and create your own custom key layouts. And custom key layouts, it could be, you can create function keys, you could key in numeric keys. You, you get to control how many rows and columns you want. You can say you want it vertical or horizontal. If you have a landscape device, you may want to create vertical uh, keyboard. And you get to uh, uh, decide what font color size, even icons, you can put your own icons transparency and many more. And this is how some of the keyboards that we have created looks like. For example, here uh, we have icons used, right? On this one, on the second one, you have function keys. This is a SAP uh, keyboard and this gives you function keys. This is a transparency, vertical keyboard, vertical numeric keyboard. This is scanning key. And this is functions only with uh, ability to switch to alphanumeric keys. And here you have a um, uh, vertical key used uh, on, in an SAP screen on a, lands, uh, on a landscape device. So the, you can create any custom key layout you want and use it the way you want in your application, either using data wedge or using uh, intent APIs provided. And very quickly, I'll show you how the enterprise keyboard works. And here you are picking the device that you want. Uh, now we have automated most of these things and it scales automatically, even if you pick one device and use it on another device. And then, uh, and I will just show you the example here. So here is your device. And now you are creating uh, your uh, your own custom key layout. You drag and drop from these buttons here, text, numeric, special function keys, and drag and drop either to the top or front, uh, to the bottom. And then you create, you, you get to say how big they are, what the text is, text color, and uh, when you hover over it, what text you want, uh, and um, uh, font size, text style, and what is the action that you want to do? When you press it, what do you want to send? Long press, what do you want to do? And you can do a preview. 
and the color you want to change, transparency level that you can control. All of this is available. And then you can push it immediately to the device and then you get to see how, how they look. And once again, this creates a config file and uh, that can be mass deployed. So here we are creating a, a vertical keyboard, A, B, two space, exactly how I want it for my application. And choosing the color here, and you can modify the color as well. And then there is a, an option to choose the image. You can pick your own image as well. And it is also very powerful and it is very popular tool with our customers. And moving on. So this is the last slide I have. And here are the links to the enterprise browser and enterprise keyboard. We will soon begin the live question and answers. If you have any questions, please, uh, I will be available to answer your questions. And also you can choose to ask your questions in the message box, uh, in the chat box as well. Thank you for your time.